I know. You know, we probably knew her. Where did it happen? Down on Orange Grove. That's right down the street. I know. We've confirmed the girl was...
laundry that I probably won't get out of the sixth grade. I gotta go. I'll see you tonight. Bye. I wish I had you all alone, just the two of us. Sixth Halloween. He's also contributing to the upcoming Halloween comic book, which is a prequel, as well as he's uh, did, done work on the Halloween website. Let's have a big fango welcome for Dan Farrens, the screenwriter. And also with us today is Nurse Karen from Halloween 2, Pamela Susan Chu. Halloween film has had in common, 
the man with the long and often mispronounced name who is credited with presenting us with one of the most enduring characters in modern horror cinema. That character is Michael Myers, and the man who kept him, has kept him alive for more than 20 years is Mustafa Akkad. Little is known about this man named Mustafa. Before assuming the role of the granddaddy of the Halloween series, Mustafa Akkad was a respected director in his own right, having honed his craft under director Sam Peckinpah and directed such epic films as The Message and Lion in the Desert. As the story goes, it was during production of Lion in the Desert that Mr. Akkad met an up-and-coming filmmaker named John Carpenter and John's then-girlfriend, Deborah Hill, who were looking for financing on a small, independent movie about babysitters stalked by the boogeyman. It is also said that Akkad's business partner, Erwin Yablans, suggested setting the movie on Halloween night, convinced Akkad to invest $320,000, and the rest, as they say, is movie history. 22 years later, the legacy of Halloween lives on. <coughs> through, through his six and soon-to-be seven incarnation, the bullheaded bo boogeyman has stubbornly refused to die. He survived beatings, burnings, and bullets, and perhaps, very soon we may find out, a beheading. <laughs> but everyone knows that you can't keep a good psycho down. Evil, as we know, never dies. And so long as Michael Myers continues his annual tradition of slaughtering the sex-crazed, unsuspecting population of Haddonfield, Illinois, when will these kids ever learn? We can rest assured that one man will keep the jack-o'-lanterns lit so that the shape will always be able to find his way home. So for his contributions to the world of horror cinema, Fangoria Magazine proudly presents their Lifetime Achievement Award to Mr. and Mr. Babysitter to be killed by the boogeyman. Strange enough, the word babysitter attracted my attention because I thought every kid in America can relate to a babysitter, so therefore we can relate to kids and therefore make sense. Now, $300,000, I was spending every day $300,000 on that epic film. So, okay, let's go. So, we work on the script. All credit goes to John Carpenter. He, he did it and came on budget 300000 So I added 20000 more for pocket money for Mr. Carpenter. And the film did hit. I mean, surprise to us. It hit, it hit, it hit, reached the $40 million. And therefore I have a record for the last 20 years 
or the record of the most profitable independent film compared from budget to income. And I lost it last year to the Blair Witch. So that's <laughs> To me, I don't really understand why the success of these movies. Why do people like to pay money and get scared? I mean, this has always puzzled me. We did some research, and we got all the answers, psychological side, that you're safe when you see it's happening there, all sorts. Then I asked my son, he was 17, Malik, tell me, why do you go pay money to get scared? Stand up, Malik, so that they can see you. Okay, that's awesome. So then I go, I take a girl to the theater. After five minutes, either she's hugging me or I'm hugging her. So <laughs> the next day, I take a new girl. How to break the ice? Automatically, we are <laughs> hugging each other. So I thought it might be funny, but it makes sense, the answer to it. So anyhow, we made one. Now... All of a sudden, <coughs> Dino De Laurentiis wanted to make number two, a sequel. At the time, there was no sequel, strange. I mean, I told him, another Halloween? He said, yes. I said, well, I don't know. He said, no, no, we will do it with Universal. And uh, we will give you profit in advance. I said, well, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. It did hit again. Then came, okay, now they want to do three, but we had a long argument about whether to have Michael Myers or not, so they wanted to have it without Michael Myers. I was against it, but I was outvoted, so we did it, and it was not the success that we really hoped for. Then I was mad, so on four, I took it from all the other partners, did number four, and I think it was our most successful one so far, number four, which was number one in the nation for two years. Then we did five, <laughs> then uh, Miramax came in and uh, did with us six and seven, and now in the spring we'll be shooting number eight. Maybe I'm maybe the only one in the world who loves Michael Myers. I mean, I love him, I don't want him to die, and he'll never <laughs> die. The whole theory is that we don't put him in any situation where he's really alive. He gets bullets, get wounds. But the seven, it wasn't him who was chopped. So I won't tell you the secret, you have to see number eight. <laughs> Thank you for your coming. I mean, really, to me, it means a lot. of it, but the credit goes to all the talent who really made Halloween. Fangoria, thank you very much. Without you, I don't know how we can promote these pictures, and I think uh, God will keep you going as strong as you are. Thank you very much.
Uh, it is official, we wanted to do Y2K, but we were not able to do it for the Y2K. And then, the, the real Y2K did nothing happen. It wasn't any disasters that they expected, so I think we probably forgot about H2K. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Khan, uh, word is that the new Halloween movie, I read this in the liquor store, but I certainly encourage it a thousand percent as it goes. Word is that the next Halloween movie is going to star a British actress, Angela Pleasance, which I think would be a wonderful choice, especially since she's the real-life daughter of, uh, of Donald Pleasance, you know, from the first of the films. Is it true that she's going to be in the uh, uh, eighth one? So far, we have no comment about casting. The script, the full script is not ready yet, but maybe. I'd love to see Angela. I hope so. Yes, sir. Uh, there's also a report that James Curtis will be on the Jamie Lee Curtis? Yeah. No, Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, yeah. of course, doesn't want to do another sequel, but uh, she has a short, very short appearance so that we see what happens to her. Yes, sir. Uh, there's a lot of controversy about the different cuts of uh, Halloween 6. Yes. Can you go into the history of that a little line? Yes, it's a history, controversy, and uh, disagreement, and uh, it was against our will, or our will, my wish for the cut, but uh, at the end, you saw what you saw. We have another version. I wouldn't know which one would have been better, so it's just a matter of really the audience. After all, the audience is the one who will tell us. Yes, sir. The, the original cut? Yes. That's somebody's working on the cut from the DVD. Yes, sir. Do you intend on uh, keeping the series going? You know, this, um, kind of like Believe me, <laughs> I'll keep it as long as Donald Pleasant, they ask him, are you going to continue, God bless his soul? Continue doing this, he said, no, no, I'll stop at 22. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, as long as there is an audience, uh, as long as there isn't the violence, the gore, this is always, I insist, no gore, no violence, just the suspense and the real scare. I mean, to me, what lands from the sky with ten ears, ten eyes, those things doesn't scare me. It scares me the real situation of real people. That's the scare. If we can continue this, we'll go on. Earlier today, somebody accused the movie of being a bloodbath, and I had to set it straight. I mean, there's just hardly any blood in it at all. Really, there was some, I guess, you know, there was a little bit more in one or two uh, sequels, but uh, we always try not to because really the scare is not in the blood of the gore. It's the build up to it, yeah. I was just wondering, uh, the eighth Halloween movie, is it going to be through Dimension Films again from Air Max, or is it going to be a different production company? Yeah, through Dimension, because they have the option to do it and uh, we'll go through them. Yes, sir. Well, where did the story of number three come from? What is the story? Yeah, where did it come from? This, um, this well, I mean, uh, John Carpenter had the story and he did it. It was a good, good movie, but not the Michael Myers episode. So, yes. Um, yeah. Will the budget be as high as the last one? Well, we don't know about the budget now. Don't. Uh, let me <laughs> share now. Uh, the script is not, the full script is not ready yet. We have a treatment and we're working on the script. So after the script, we'll be able to tell about the budget. Yes, ma'am. Um, would you ever work with uh, John Carpenter again? With pleasure, but I think, uh, you know, he doesn't want to do another uh, sequel, but uh, I would love to. He's a great talent, no doubt. Yes, sir. Steve Miner is a, also a good, I mean, you're telling me if I work with him again? Yes, I think, you know, don't expect me to stand here and uh, knock with this director or that director. Obviously a talent uh, could be used in the situation that he would be good at, maybe, we hope so. Yes, sir. Uh, 
Yeah, he presented, Tarantino presented the story, and I don't know, it just wasn't, uh, we didn't use it, but that was, uh, we had a meeting with him at the time. Maybe it was too bloody, I think, probably. Then. How many different Michael Myers characters were played for Michael Myers? How many characters? Well, how many people played Michael Myers? Oh, there is about five or six. There was two episodes we had the same Michael Myers, but to us, that's really, he's not, as long as he's not seen, uh -huh. we don't, uh, yeah, okay. yes. In, um, in Halloween 8, are you planning on continuing any of the other characters from H2O, like Jamie Lee Curtis's son? Is that an idea? For the well, uh, I'd rather not to because uh, I'd be giving away a lot of the story, so maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Do you know why uh, Daniel Harris wasn't brought back in 6? Why J.C. Brandy took over? Well, she, she, well, because we really use somebody else, that's probably it. <laughs> yes. Can you tell us who's writing a script for Part 8? Larry Brandt. No, Larry, I don't know, probably you, you don't. Yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, right, I worked with Sam Peckinpah, right, the high country. I was just beginning, I graduated from UCLA. It was easy, it wasn't easy to break, make a break to the industry. And then they came to the university, they wanted somebody who can advise a director about a film about Algeria, revolution. So they chose me, I went, met him, and he was preparing a movie about Algeria. And then the Algerian revolution just got their independence, so he was put to IPM to do Ride the High Country. He has a liking for me, he said, come over and just, no payment, but just watch, what. So I went there, and he keep tells me, he keep telling me, listen, boy, you have to start from the top. Oh, really? I said, this is always, we say this at university, start from the top. And he said, you have to start from the top. How? Oh, he said, write something produce something. <coughs> so I write. Every day I go in and write the story and he takes it and he tears it. Tears it. Then one day got an idea. Being a foreign student at UCLA, I was invited at many American homes and so on. And always the questions from Americans. What do you think of the American woman? What do you think of the American education? American food? I thought they want to know, Americans, they want to know about themselves. I thought it would be a good idea to make a panel show with the foreign students, one African, one Asian, one European, one Latin American, with an American moderator. It's called As Others See Us. I showed him this to Sam Peckinpah. He looked at it. He said, there is something there. So I presented to CBS, NBC, ABC, as usual, we always send them. We'll call you, don't call us. <laughs> For this idea, I got called from CBS and NBC. NBC, of course, that was a starving period, starvation period. I was really barely have anything, uh, any money to eat even. NBC would give me $400 for, to produce the show, but no credit. CBS would give me $100, but with the producer's credit. For me, four hundred dollars means a lot at the time. So I went to Sam Peck and buy it. I got an offer from CBS and NBC. He said, "What are you? What are you taking?" I told him, four hundred dollars NBC." He told me, "I'm sorry, ladies." He said, "You son of a bitch! What do you want the money for? Take the credit." So I went to CBS. I took the credit the producer. That was my big opening. God bless his soul. That's the son of a bitch made a lot of me. <laughs> <laughs> and I work with him in the right high country. That's the only film I work with him on it. Well, okay. Uh, you probably know that they're working on uh, two crossover films, Jason and Freddy and Chucky and Freddy. If these two movies are successful, and I see no reason why they should be, would you be considering doing a Halloween versus Freddy or uh, Chucky? Well, there's always, maybe, I cannot, at this moment we are not considering it, but why not? I mean, there's always, it depends on the, 
I think the Freddy's approach is different than ours, you know. They, they, ours is a real person that is not, doesn't do any, doesn't go through wars, doesn't go through, maybe that's the conflict, but we never know. Thank you very much. I am honored.
join me in welcoming the film's producer and co-writer, who later went on to produce a number of wonderful films, including The Fisher King, Escape from New York, some tremendous movies, Miss Deborah Hill. <laughs> Where? 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 
last three decades, Halloween. Woo! My name is Dennis Bartok. I'm the programmer for the American Cinematheque. And as I'm sure all of you know, we are overjoyed to have with us uh, almost the entire creative team that was responsible for making Halloween. And they've come out here tonight to share with you, the audience, the fans, their memories, their observations on making this film. I would like to thank just a few people before we begin. And we do have a small, brief awards presentation before the Q&A, and then we're actually going to run a beautiful, new, restored 35 millimeter print of Halloween. I would like to thank, first and foremost, all of our great friends at Anchor Bay Entertainment. negative for the film, which was thought long lost for a long while. I'd like to thank Jay Douglas, the president of Anchor Bay, Bill Lustig, everyone who has helped to put this event together. I would like to especially thank Marianne Radini and Scott Taylor for their enormous help in organizing this. to the film's producer and co-writer, Deborah Hill, who's also outside. <laughs> organizing this event tonight. Uh, before we bring our guests up for a Q&A about the making of the film, there is a small awards presentation. Will you please join me in welcoming Dr. Donald Reed, who is the president of the Academy of Science Fiction. Mr. Carpenter, honored members of the cast and crew, 